pressed. Thank you. Okay. So when I call your name, if you just indicate you're present, Sharon. Here. Christine. Here. Paul Bockelman. Present. George. Here. And Austin Sarrett is here. We have a quorum. We're joined by Bob Parent and Tim Alex. Uh, thank you very much. So the next item on the agenda says subcommittee assignments. But in light of um, additions and subtractions from the committee, Paul, I wonder if it's okay with you that we wait to talk about subcommittees until we have a, a more fully reconstituted committee. That makes sense. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the Jones Library Building Committee of November 27. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there second. a second? Second. Christine, thank you. Uh, corrections to the minutes. Okay, then I'd ask you to indicate your approval of um, the minutes of November 27th, Sharon. Yes. Christine. Yes. Paul. Yes. George. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. Okay, next is the town manager's report. Uh, just report that the town council has approved the increase in the uh, uh, um borrowing authorization for the project and um, by more than two thirds vote is required by law. Congratulations. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, Jennifer's not here. So I don't, uh, don't know that we have anyone to do the financial update unless the town manager wants to do it. I don't have an update for you for the finances. Okay, so we will we'll skip that item. Mm -hmm. Next is a report from uh, uh, Colliers. Tim? Uh, thanks, Austin. Um, I'll ask Will to share his screen with the uh, schedule. Great. Wonderful. Uh, okay, great. Um, so recently, um, we were going through the still going through the permitting process and um, what we have going forward and coming up next week will be the uh, uh, excuse me, the historic commission meeting. Um, and that's going to be on uh, next Monday night. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're anticipating one final uh, or hopefully just one more meeting with them uh, later in the month. Of, of this month in January. Um, we have some other things that we just want to um, clear up and just working with the town um, um, and just making sure we have everything lined up so that um, when we do get a contractor on board, we're we're ready for a, a building permit um, in um, late, late winter or early spring. Um, but a lot of activity that we're going we're doing right now has to do with the pre-qualification process. Mm -hmm. So um, just as a little refresher, we have to go through and pre-qualify um, all the general contractors for the project as well as all filed subcontracts. So filed subcontracts are certain contracts that are over uh, estimated to be over a certain dollar threshold for certain categories of work like um, metal windows or um, resilient tile, floor tile, or um, various trades. So we're going through that process. They've submitted their qualifications. Um, we're reviewing those. We're gonna have a meeting um, next week to finalize that list. Um, but um, for the most part, uh, uh, we have a good turnout in, in all categories except for one. Uh, it's very common, unfortunately, but uh, the elevator trade you just don't get more than one usually. Um, so when we did go through the first time and issued the request for qualifications, we did get one, um, I believe we got one, but we had to go back out. Um, those were, were due um, or are gonna be coming up due on the 10th uh, and we'll see if we get any, any more, but um, 
typically we don't see those come through. And so then we have to go follow the AG's um, guidance and and um, award it to the, have the general contractor um, buy it out as part of their package. But um, we'll be in touch with um, the bid unit with the AG's office and kind of go through and follow those steps as required. But all the other trades um, and even the GCs, we got a, a good number, good turnout for each. Um, the um, design team is uh, continuing to work on, on the construction documents and get them ready for bidding. Um, they did submit their final submission to MBLC and did receive uh, approval on the program and those documents. Um, our anticipated um, documents should be ready um, uh, in the next week or two, and we're anticipating going out to bid on um, advertising and the central register and going out to bid on the 17th of this month. Um, depending upon how things go with the AG's office, uh, we may need to push that a week or so just to make sure we have um, you know, guidance if we need to do something additional for the elevator subcontract uh, filed sub bidders. But um, we have some flexibility that if we needed to push, um, we could push the, the, the bidding process uh, a week or so and just all the dates would shift. Um, so our, right now we're currently showing that the filed sub bids um, would be due on February 14th. And then two weeks later, the general contract bids coming in on uh, February 28th and then anticipating an award in, in early March. So um, currently that's what we're sticking with, but uh, we do have some flexibility if we do need to uh, make some minor adjustments. Any questions about schedule or anything that I've touched on so far? Yep, Paul. You're muted, Paul. If, if you could just fix the years under move out temp library space, I think the award temporary space is 131.24, and then the move into renovated Jones Library is 10.525. You just fix that for future reference. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Christine? Yeah, I was just wondering where we're at on figuring out the temporary library space. Paul? So I believe there's an RFQ um, that was issued and is due tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I believe. All oh, right. And then, Paul, roughly how long does it take to make a selection? We, I think we've allowed two or three weeks. I think, I think we put on here the 31st. Right. Christine, is that okay? Are you so? I was just wondering, and who like makes that final decision? Does that come to us, or is it Paul or the town manager makes up a course in consultation with the library director? Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Tim, just for uh, can you just remind me what general contractor mobilization involves? Well, typically there's um getting started on the site, but there's certain, a lot of paperwork, really. It's not physical mobilization, but a lot of paperwork. They develop their schedule of values. They issue their um, letters of intent to all the minority and, and women-owned business enterprises that were required to uh, try and meet those goals. Um, what they will be doing before that is meeting with the building official and making sure that they have their permit and can get started with maybe some erosion controls and, and some of those types of um, on-site activities, but uh, pretty lightweight and uh, before really getting equipment there and, and um, doing any demolition. Um, in this particular project, really what the, the first activity on site would be um, is rear uh, interior abatement. So, um, you know, we might be able to kind of um, have the general contractor be getting their paperwork and, and information together while um, the first phase of really getting the abatement done is is underway. Uh, right, you just lost me at the 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 end. So, in terms of being in the building or beginning to work on the site, uh, does that happen after the end of the mobilization or while it's also going on? Well, we would be doing it as as we're going on. Um, certainly, 
there are certain requirements that an abatement contractor has to file a 10 day notification and get some other licenses and, and, and things set up before they can actually begin work. Um, so it wouldn't be, you know, it's, it's not going to be on the first day of the contract. It would probably be about two weeks period before they could really get their mobilization where they are ready to, to begin work. Okay. Any other questions about the schedule? Christine? Yeah, I just, um, how is the uh, bid evaluation going to go, specifically the awarding of it? What group of people get involved in that? Well, we'll have, um, basically, this is going to be a pretty straightforward bid. It's a general contractor bid. So um, we're, we don't have a lot of uh, add alternates or, or deduct alternates that might make a difference in who is the ultimate low bidder based on which alternates are accepted. Um, so what we would do is review the, the bids as they come in and make sure that they've um, submitted properly, that their their forms are signed and the submission with the their um, requirements as far as their, um, their bid bonds, their um, certifications of non-collusion, all those different things that they have to submit are done. And then we would make a recommendation uh, to award to the lowest uh, responsible bidder. Just to follow up, so we have to go with the lowest bidder? Is that how this one's going to go? Unless they um, are somehow deemed to be um, unresponsive or uh, unres unresponsible or unresponsive. Okay. Thank you. And we have a procurement officer who will review all that to make sure they've met, met all the requirements of the bid law. Right. Yeah, It's this is a general contract, um, Chapter 149, um, mm -hmm. the procurement process versus uh, 149A, which is a construction manager at risk. Uh, it's slightly different in that you can um, put out a, a request for proposals and then evaluate those proposals and choose which contractor you want to work with. Um, a different process. So in this one, we do need to go with the, the lowest responsible bidder. Thank you for explaining that. Okay. Any other questions about the schedule? All right, Tim, what else you got for us? Well, as I mentioned, the bid documents are continuing. Um, you know, they did, the, the uh, FAA has done a good job as far as getting those out to the MBLC and then getting approval. Uh, but there is uh, a number of things that we need to wrap up um, uh, and we're working with um, getting some other issues resolved as far as easements with uh, abutters uh, where we have um, maybe some encroachments on on the property for foundations for retaining walls or um, or, or those types of issues. Um, we have um, going through uh, on our end again, just, um, uh, reviewing the documents and um, finalizing any of the, the language that has to go in the um, specifications in the front end of the specifications really to identify um, the contractor's responsibilities, their role and responsibilities on the project. So finalizing um, those documents. Um, but um, again, we're anticipating um, advertising and being uh, documents being available on the 17th. And depending upon what um, what happens in the conversations about the easements, I take it that might affect something that would be written into the contract of the general contractor? It, it could, yes. So we would need to spell out that so that, um, that if there's any um, work associated with that or any costs that might be incurred by the uh, general contractor that they're able to um, evaluate that and put a, a price towards it, uh, include that within their bid. Um, so if we could conceivably go out to bid and add that language or any kind of requirements as part of an addenda that would go out during the bidding period because the, the general contractor's bids aren't due until the end of February. So, so we, I just want, that's what I was trying to get. At. We can go out to bid even if the, all the I's and T's were not done on the conversations about the easement. 
Correct. Good. Okay. Any other questions about any of that, the big construction bid and documents or the easements? Okay. Tim, do you have um, invoices for us? Yeah, I'll let Will talk to those because he uh, has them um, that he's going to share a screen and, and he can um, talk to the different invoices that are uh, up for this month. Thank you. Is that legible? I can't quite get everything on one page. Is that big enough for everyone to see? I I can I can see anybody can't see it. Looks fine. Thank you. So this is um for the month of November. This is Collier's invoice. Um same value as months prior, uh no changes uh to our billing rate for the month of November. Okay. You have one just one invoice? I have one for Collier's, one for FAA. I can go through both. Why don't we go through both? Yeah, if you if you go to the next one. So this is FAA's invoice for the month of November, um, showing uh, this is in line with previous month's bidding, and this takes them through the completion of their construction documents, which um, was that MBLC milestone, which they have hit. Um, and next, we'll start seeing them billing in the bid phase um, in the upcoming months. Okay, and this is $136,250. Correct. Okay. Um, so, any questions about the invoices? Okay, is there a motion to approve the payment of these invoices? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. If no other questions, then indicate your approval of a payment of these invoices, Sharon. Yes. Christine. Yes. Paul. Yes. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. And Austin says yes. Okay. Anything else from Collier's? No, I don't have anything else, Austin. All right. Thank you. If you take down the screen share, that would be great. So I'm going to, if it's okay with you all, it, since Jennifer has arrived, I'm going to ask Jennifer uh, if she could provide anything by way of a financial update on the project. Jennifer, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I don't have anything at this point, no. Okay. Thank you. Uh, subcommittee reports. Christine, on behalf of the design subcommittee. I have nothing to report. Now, I, I do have a question, Sharon. Did you want to go ahead? Yeah, so I added that um, basically so that I can I can update y'all. Um, I just wanted to highlight a little bit more about you know what Tim had talked about and and all of the stuff that's been happening kind of behind the scenes. Um, you know, we've the staff and I have been working with the architects on on these you know types of important details like the location of the IT and the wiring and and all of that. The locations for our art, uh, you know, our fine arts collection, which walls and and all of that kind of a thing. The chandelier that we have in special collections that's going to be replaced um, where it was hung originally in the Goodwin room, uh, which is awesome. Um, um, and signage, you know, staff have been talking about um, wayfinding signage, donor recognition signage, that kind of a thing. Um, and uh, so all of that is going on, A. B, CVS approached me yesterday or the day before um, to say that they're interested in in collaborating with us on the landscaping Um you know, when, once we get to that point. So I, you know, I thought that was really lovely of them. Um, you know, they didn't want the library to have a beautiful backyard and then all of a sudden for it just to kind of like 
stop and and whatever. So I don't know what kind of form that's going to take, but I just wanted you all to know that um, they're excited about it. They're excited about the project and and with work, working with our landscaping team. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to let you all know that, um, wow, it's like, uh, it's going to happen. And, and so staff are, you know, really, really excited and, and, and nervous in a really good way. Um, and so we're excited, staff are excited to find out, you know, the interim locations. And I just wanted to briefly talk about the kinds of things they have to think about it. It's not as simple as just, you know, packing up a couple of boxes and putting it into a pickup truck and then putting it into a whatever the interim location will be. Um, we're going to close on January 24th. This will just be the Jones Library. It will close to the public. Staff will come in and, and this will be our, our beginning of shredding and, and throwing things away that we know we're not going to need. We, we do not want to store things that we're not going to need in two years. So, um, so that's, that's exciting. Um, but if we're going to be packing in the month of February, moving in March, and all of these are like issues, you, you, you know, these are guesses at this point, unpacking in April, reopening in May, we also have to think about all of the staffing schedules. Um, staff will be, you know, all, throughout the town and maybe even other towns. Uh, the branches, you know, will be increasing the open hours at the branches. We'll have to be looking at the services that we provide, whether it's circulation, holds pickup, um, the computers, both the staff computers and the public computers, programming where that kind of... Um, where those services will take place. Special collections, that's its own kind of exciting beast. Uh, you know, how we how we pack that and handle that and where we're going to store all of that. Um, the collection, we know we're not going to be able to fit it all wherever our interim spaces are. So there's there's going to have to be some kind of storing of, of some of our our books, but whatever is stored that will have to be updated in the in the patron catalog so that everybody knows where these items are. Um, you've got the art gallery. So, you know, there's a possibility of wherever our interim locations are that maybe we'll be able to host exhibits there. Not sure. ESL, this is a really important piece of services that we provide, and, and it that has to remain downtown. And so we've been uh, connecting with the rec department and the senior center um, to see if we can continue our, we have an ESL program for seniors, uh, and, and we would love, we would love to, for that to happen at the bang. So we're working on that. Um, and then while all of that is happening, we, we need to keep the public informed. So, um, as, as information comes in, I just want to, uh, you know, try and reassure you all as well as the public, um, that, uh, the minute we find things out that are that are certain, we will absolutely broadcast it on on every social media website possibility uh, to keep people informed. Because I think these next few months they're going to move like, like lightning, um, and and be patient with us, and uh, certainly ask questions. But right right now we don't we don't know a lot. Um, so I that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for the opportunity. Right. So any questions about what Sharon has just said? Do you know any more than about CVS is interested in collaborating? Uh, does that mean they just want to be able to complement whatever we do? Or is there something beyond that that you might have been referencing? We didn't get into it. They just said, you know, they... Um... Yes, they want they want it to to complement, and I, yeah. So we'll just stop there. Great. Okay. Um, the chair of the outreach committee no longer is on our committee, so I don't think we have a report from outreach. So we'll leave that um, as it is. Um, correspondence. I don't believe I have received or know of any correspondence to which we need to be responding uh topics not anticipated none that i know of 
The next item is public comment. We have nine attendees. Thank you all for coming. If any of the attendees wishes to make a comment, if they would raise their virtual hand, that would be great. Okay, I see no, no hands, no public comment. So again, I wanna thank you all and say, obviously how exciting it is that we are, we are where we are. This is an important, obviously moment, which we've all been targeting when the construction documents are done, the bid documents are done, the bids begin to come in. And uh, it's really great to have gotten to this point and really excited about what comes um, what comes next. Uh, and the town will be going through a process, right, Paul, to figure out about additional members to our committee? Yeah, so I think the, the trustees and the, uh, the council have to uh, technically recommend a member to represent them. Then the town manager has to make the appointment. So I think the, the trustees have already done that and the council will do that on Monday. Terrific. Okay. Thank you all. Happy New Year to everybody. We're adjourned. Oh, oh Chris, I'm sorry. Christine, forgive me. I, just, I was just wondering, when is our next meeting? Has that been set? Or Sharon? No. No, it hasn't been set yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Well. Thank you. Bye-bye.